to show you how to use Ibis Paint on an iPad Pro to make really neat digital mock-ups of your patterns. You can do this using a different device or a phone, um, but the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil make this super, super quick and easy. So I'm going to start from scratch here and create a new one with this plus sign. Say import picture. And then what I did is I went to the website with the PDF pattern listing and downloaded or took a screenshot of the line drawings from the pattern. So I had that file saved in my photos already. When I click on it, it's asking me, do I want to treat this like a line drawing? Basically, do I want to make it transparent? And yes, I do. So I'll say, okay. And then it lets you touch it up to make it um, as clear as you can. So let's start with this uh, three-tiered skirt here. You really, to make it look the best, want it to be completely black and white. You don't want this gray part in there. So you can adjust the levels. I'm gonna make the black lines a little darker just to make it stand out a little more. And then I'm gonna change the white to be brighter there so that I like the balance of how that looks. So that looks basically all black and white to me. So I'll tap this check mark. And now this is my canvas. So I really don't care about all this other stuff. So I'm gonna select this canvas tool and say trim, which lets me size it down to the part that I'm interested in here. There's a little bit of extra around it right now that will clean that up in a second. So it's when it's the size you want, then tap the green check. And now this is your whole canvas. Down here, this little one that shows you your layers, and this is where all the magic happens. <laughs> this is where you're gonna fill in um, pictures of your fabric. So to start with, you can see your line drawing, it's transparent, that looks really good. I'm gonna get rid of these words up here, so I'm gonna pick my eraser, and then you can select how big of an eraser you want. We'll go kind of medium size there, and just get rid of all those words. We don't need any of that. Okay, and whenever you're erasing, I recommend using kind of short strokes, because then you can undo if you accidentally erase something you don't want. If you keep your pen down or your finger down the whole time and then make a mistake, then you have to do it all again. So short strokes will make sure you don't have to redo anything. But that looks good. I've got my lines ready and I'm ready to import some fabric. So come down here. I'm gonna type or hit this plus on the far left. That means brand new layer. And I'm gonna drag it below my lines so that the lines will be on top. And then I'm gonna click the camera to pick what photo I wanna import. And right here, this is just a picture I took of all five colors of my fabric laid out together. So I'm gonna pick that. Right now it's huge, you can pinch to change the size of it. And let's say to start with, I want to use pink for the top. So I'm just gonna zoom. Um, if you had a pattern or something here, you'd wanna zoom so that your pattern was appropriately sized to the area. Um, so let's, for this one, I just want it to be solid. So that's pretty good there. I'm gonna say check. It's asking again, do I wanna make this a transparent line drawing? No, I don't for this one. I wanna use the actual pictures because if I said okay, that would convert this to black and white and that's not what I want. So now I'm gonna say cancel. I want it just like it is. Tap to close your layer palette there. And now I just wanna erase everything that's not part of my drawing. So what I like to do is start with a kind of small eraser just to do the closest to the edge. And again, do little short strokes so if you mess up, you can undo it. And then you can be as picky as you want to be here. If this is just for me, I'm okay with like a little bit of rough on the edge. If I was doing this to be, you know, a product listing or something, I would probably zoom in more and make sure I was being really careful to not go over the line. So this is the most time consuming part. But the good news is you only have to do this once per pattern. So once I do this for this particular set of fabric, the next time I want to layer fabric in, I don't have to do the, oh, I just went a little too far there. So I'm going to hit undo down here. You can also double tap to undo, but I usually just reach down and hit the button whenever I don't like it. Okay, getting a little too picky there. I'm going to just leave it. Okay, so now I'll zoom out. I'm going to make my eraser bigger now so I can just get rid of all this extra. Oops, a little too big. I'm going to have to come down a little. Okay, so now I have a layer of my top filled in there. 
I'm going to go down here. Whenever you click the layer palette, it automatically adds a new layer in here for you. So I'm going to pick this new layer that it added. If it didn't for some reason or you don't see it, you can always tap that plus again to add another layer. But I'm going to pick this one that it added for me. And then I'm going to pick the camera again. I'm going to pick the same picture again. I'm just going to use a different part of it. So let's say we want the purple stripe next. So I'll center the purple there, say OK. No, cancel, don't want a line drawing. Back to the eraser, back to the smaller size. So I can. And now you can't erase this part because it's already, it's on a different layer. Um, so you don't have to be careful to avoid your pink. All I'm looking at right now is the lines right next to the purple. And then go a little bigger. All right, and then I'm going to zoom out and go even bigger just so I can wipe this all out. All right, now two layers down. Tap the layer button again. Pick the new layer it created. Photo. Let's go yellow this time. Okay, check. Don't, can't, don't want the line drawing. I'm going to pick my eraser. Go a little smaller. I'm just doing this a little rough as an example for you here. So it'll be pretty close, but I'm not trying to get it 100% perfect. Okay, a little bit bigger. Erase. All right, and last layer. Added a new one, go to the photo. Let's do the green. Oh, I said OK, and that was the wrong button. It made it black and white. So I'm going to hit that X, say cancel that. Um, and then you can pick your eraser. So it's not a big deal if you accidentally hit the wrong button. Just cancel it if you do. Really big. Clear all that out. OK, so now. Um, this is technically my first completed mock-up. I'm going to come down here and hit this arrow. Click Save as PNG. You could also save it as transparent if you don't want the background on there. But I'm just going to say Save. Okay, and now this is where the really cool part happens. Now that I have all of these layers, I can play around with it and make different options without having to do all that fine detail work. So let's say um, I don't want the top to be pink. Let's actually see what it looks like in a different color. So I'm gonna select that pink layer, click the plus over here to add a new layer, and then click this little button that says clipping. And you can see it drew a little arrow down to that pink. And that means anything I add to this layer is gonna be constrained to what's visible from that other layer. So if I add my photo, and let's say we wanna make that top one blue now, it's already done. That's all you have to do. Boom, done, no line drawing. So now we can export that, save as PNG, and then you can get crazy with it. You can, um, let's take, uh, actually I'm gonna add a new layer above my line drawing up here and just close this. I'm gonna switch to a brush. So let's say I wanted to try out some like color blocking and see what it would look like here if I did, you know, an extra stripe across the middle here. And that's just a rough line, I didn't really, like how straight it was, good enough. Okay, so you get the idea. Let's say we also wanna like maybe do a different color sleeve, just for visualization here. Okay, so now I've got new lines added here. I can add another layer. What I'm actually gonna do is come to my pink layer because that's the shape of this whole top. I'm gonna duplicate it. So that's this plus with the dark box around it or the solid box. I can say duplicate layer. So now I have another one that looks just like the pink one. Um, I'm going to drag this up higher so it's on top. And then I can erase part of it. And we can see, oh, don't want that big of an eraser. Let's get down to. So now we're erasing the pink layer to see the blue layer underneath it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I went a little over onto the sleeve there, but you could clean that up if you cared enough. But you can see how it's really easy to make more options. I never 
change something that was previously existing. Like once I had one of these layers that was correct, just duplicate it if you wanna make a different variation of it because then you never have to go back and redo something. Um, so if I wanna save this as an option, save as PNG, um, I wanna show you something else that's really cool. You can uncheck the visibility. So let's say we wanna, eh, I don't really like that top bodice color blocking thing. Um, so I'm just gonna hide that, hide my extra lines and I'm back to where I was here. And then let's say I wanna do something crazy. I wanna import um, a repeating pattern fabric. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna make another, actually it already added my extra layer here and it's already clipping to that pink layer. So this is where I want it to be. If, if this layer didn't exist, I would have said plus and then clicked the clipping arrow again to make sure it's pointing down to this pink bodice part. I am gonna drag this layer above the blue one so you'll see it instead, or I could take away the visibility of the blue one. Otherwise, you wouldn't see this layer if it was beneath it. Uh, but I'm going to click the picture here to import. This is a picture that I saved to my camera roll of the actual fabric design. So I wanna show you how can you, you can make this repeating if you want to visualize that. So if you've downloaded a picture of your fabric or you could even take a physical picture of your fabric and just crop it so that the whole image is what you wanna repeat, put it wherever you want. And then there's a little toggle down here that says repeat. So tap that and then it will repeat and fill your area with that. And you can change the scale of it if you want, move it around. It's just really, really cool. And then for this example, no, no line drawing. Let's say that I'm done with uh, that mock-up. So save it. And now if I go to my photo gallery, I've got all of these options. I can use as mock-ups. So now let's say you want, it's another day, you want to make the same dress with different fabric. So you can click your original one, come up here to the three dots, say duplicate, and now if you go back, you'll see you have your original one and a copy of it. So now you can edit your copy. I'm going to just rename it right now. Oh, it already named it Parker Demo 2. That's perfect for now. Um, so when I edit this, if I don't want all these layers, now it's okay to delete stuff because this is, I'm not going to mess up my old one. Um, but let's say instead of you know, the rainbow here, let's use a panel for this top part. So I'm going to open my layer, find the pink one, find something that's clipping down to it, add in a new photo, this fabric. I know it's not really this small, but that's fine just for this example to make it repeat so it fills in and then I'm done save as PNG back to my gallery so now anytime you want to make that dress it's just as easy as dragging and dropping in the fabric pictures you don't have to do any of the detail erasing you only have to do that the very first time you do a pattern hopefully this was helpful um, to get a crash course in Ibis paint and how you can use layers and clipping to make it look like your fabric. Let me know if you have any questions.